The reason why we are discussing this is because in Kenya, in the last 10 years, there is a resurgence of traditional belief systems that are going beyond just normal customs. They are requiring worship, and whether you talk about the to, you talk about the Luos or talk about the the Masais or talk about the Kambas or talk about uh, the Luyas, there is a big resurgence, and it has come especially in the last ten years in a big way. The trouble is the church is wasn't ready for it, so everybody is suffering on their own. You go to your own home. People are insisting on certain things, but the church has not made a stand. And so everybody is suffering on their own. So the, 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 I believe the Kajiado church fathers have therefore decided to call us together so that we can talk about the issues and how as a church we should actually respond. I want to base our discussion on Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. I've highlighted several words. The first one is, do not conform. Culture, like, and I don't think we have enough time today to discuss culture, it's a whole subject on its own, are the norms, the accepted norms of a people. That's what you mean by culture. Accepted norms of a people. In other words, when you don't do the normal thing, they tell you you are strange. You are not acceptable. So what are those norms? Those are what we call uh, culture. But the scriptures are telling us, do not conform to your culture, to your norms. The patterns of this world are the norms of this world. The norms of the Kikuyus. The norms of the lawyers. We are told, do not conform to the norms, to the culture of this world. What should you do instead? Be transformed. So you, you are born a Kikuyu. Be transformed means you will not necessarily follow the culture of the Kikuyus. Because your mind is renewed. When it is renewed, you are able to test every teaching by, the, by your culture. You are able to test and only approve what in culture is God's will. Not his approximate will, not what looks like it's acceptable, but what is the perfect will of God. And that's what every Christian is expected to do. You know, when you go to preach in a culture, and I used to be, I'm the founding chairman of the Sitam Church Missions Board. And um, we had to think, as we were trying to go, to go to the unreached people groups and talking to our missionaries before we sent them, there are several things we discussed. And one of them is your attitude to the culture to which you are going. There are two extremes when you go to, and none of them is right. There are two extremes when you go to a new culture. Number one is to assume that the target culture is all okay. That means when you go among the Radires, you do not touch their customs. You talk, you add Jesus on top. In other words, they stay as they are, then add Jesus on top. Because their culture is okay. You don't want, you want the, your, 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 your message to be accepted. So you don't challenge the things they believe and practice. That's not Christianity. Christianity is asking for transformation, not conforming. But transformation. And that means that extreme of accepting everything in a culture and you are going to talk to them about Jesus, there's a problem with it. But then we have the other extreme. What is the other extreme? That the missionary's culture, the culture I have as I go to preach to the Redeemers, is all okay. Which is again not true. Even the missionary's culture has a problem. It's not the Bible. They are they are Christian and Christian in that culture. So the culture they have is not right. Maybe you are a Kikuyu going to preach among the Maasais. The Kikuyu culture has problems. Every culture has a problem. So either extreme is a problem. And uh, therefore, what we are saying, we must learn how to separate the count of the gospel 
from the culture, whether it is the culture we come from as missionaries or the culture we are going to in the new group. Unfortunately, you can guess with me what the missionaries who came to Kenya did. Which extreme? Actually, they went to an extreme. Which extreme? Number two. They assumed that the, the white man's culture is all okay. So your names have to be, they, they, would, they would tell you your name, Kamau, is not right. So they give you a name of Henry, and that's the, one of their, 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 their corrupt kings. And the name Henry is supposed to be Christian, and the name Kamau is not supposed to be Christian. Because the assumption is, Wazungu's names were okay. Ours are not. It's not biblical. Proper missionary work means you must know that both your culture and the culture of the where you are going requires to be judged. So my summary, and I don't have enough to, time tonight because I'm hoping to talk for only 25 minutes. I've already taken six minutes so far. I, am, I, I, I want to just introduce at another time, we can actually go into details, but today is uh, just introduction. So what we are saying then, we are created, everybody on earth is created by Jehovah God. The devil does not have his own people. So even if we are fallen creatures, there are godly customs are then in every tribe. That means if you come among the Kikuyus, there are some traditional customs and beliefs which were never taught by the missionary, but they were okay. Let me give you an example. The Kukuyus believe in receiving visitors. And, um, and uh, basically, they even say in Kikuyu, that means the Kikuyus belief system is that whoever he comes, even if you don't know him, please give him something to eat. After he is well fed and you have welcomed him well, you can say, where have you come from? Where are you going? But not before you receive him. In other words, when you welcome, it's our culture to welcome people. But when you go through the scriptures, you discover it's also biblical. Although the Kikuyu did not get it from the Bible, it's in the Bible. The Bible says that we have encouraged us to welcome visitors because it says some welcome visitors and they turned out to be angels. It's not in the Bible, uh, Bishop Godfrey. It, is in the, it needs to be understood that the Kikuyus have godly customs even before the Muslim come. So you cannot come and condemn or Kikuyu customs, because some of them are carried in the Bible, although they did not learn them from the Bible. However, every tribe on earth so far studied has satanic customs, evil customs that can only come from the devil. You know, like among the Kikuyus, if, you are, if your child got teeth from the wrong side, the teeth should begin with the lower ones. If they came from above, you are a caste. Now, surely that's not in the Bible. It's a, belief, it's a belief among the Kikuyus. But it's demonic. You get twins or triplets, and there is another belief system against it. Now, you need to understand clearly that they are, whether whichever tribe you pick, there are belief systems that the moment you become a Christian, you cannot continue with them. But they have the devil as the origin. And you cannot belong to Jehovah and still follow customs that are praising the devil. Thirdly, when you are listing the customs among any tribe, not only there will be godly customs, there will be demonic customs, but there is another third set of customs that are neutral because they are human in origin. In other words, if three or four peoples live together, they start having some norms, and those norms are not influenced by the devil, they are influenced by the way we live. For example, the Kikuyus eat Mokimo. Mokimo is neither godly nor ungodly. You, you know, when you go to preach among the redeers, you don't tell them from today you'll be eating Mokimo. Mokimo is a normal Kikuyu thing. It's acceptable to Kikuyus, but don't go selling it to other tribes. But there's nothing wrong with Mokimo. Even after you got saved, continue eating Mokimo. So Mokimo is in the third level. So you must go in your tribe and check the customs. Decide, are they godly customs? Even if they are, they are Kikuyu customs, continue with them. Are they evil customs? Even if they are believed by the Kikuyus, you must reject them. Are they neutral customs? 
Those ones you can either drop or, or continue with them. How do you know a custom is neutral? You know a custom is neutral because there is no belief about it. Nobody will tell you, if you eat mokimo, you will be blessed. <laughs> okay, you will be, it is nutritious. You will be, they teach nutrition. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the blessing. They cannot tell you, if you don't eat mokimo, you are going to be cast. When I kill me. No, 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 no. Mokimo is a neutral custom. So if you want to check whether what they're asking you to do in a gurario or in a, in a ruratio or wherever, if you want to know whether it's a custom you can take or not, check what is the belief behind the custom. The custom itself may look innocent, but the belief behind it is a demonic belief. So you cannot continue with that custom is no longer innocent because the belief system behind it is not a biblical one. So, and how do you know a certain custom, when it disagrees with the scriptures, it is not acceptable. So it's important to, to therefore, as Christians, as pastors, teach our members not everything in your culture is acceptable. I, I, I realize I've already taken 11 minutes. The key word, and those, the, the bishops and the pastors have accurate done theology. So they understand contextualization. That the truth of the matter is, it's not, the matter is not as simple as my introduction has given it. Because when you, go to, when you go to a new group, you cannot teach the message. It's in the Bible, but you can't teach it without trying to contextualize it to the group. That means you try to study the beliefs of the group, the, the customs of the group, then preach your message to faith there. That's why when Jesus is talking to the woman, the Samaritan woman, he contextualizes his message. The message is, I'm the one who has come to give satisfaction. But because they are at the well, he talked about the well. That is what we mean by contextualization. Um, and, and, it, and it will be important that um, that, that is fully, fully understood. So contextualization is taking God's message and teaching it in a way that can be understood by the people that are the people that are that are that you are visiting but that's where the problem is in the effort to become contextual that's when you start accepting wrong things and uh, that can be quite a quite a quite a problem somebody called Curtis Peterson says that all cultures are a combination of good and evil and I've talked I've talked about that and then somebody called Estesa says contemporary Christians in the effort to contextualize end up in one of two extremes. One is called obscur obscurantism, again a big theological word, and the other one is syncretism. These are the things we are seeing among our people. In an effort to go back to a traditional system, many Christians, some are bishops even, some are pastors, some are apostles, they have actually accepted those belief systems and they, be, they end up being accused of obscurantism. What is obscurism? It's to obscure Christ's message by accepting something that's not from Christ. You are taking, um, a, 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 you are taking as Christian a belief that is not. In other words, you continue with a traditional belief and you start teaching it like it's a Christian belief. You are obscuring the real message by taking a message that is not Christian. And of course, you are confusing the gospel for the idea that has come from your tradition. We call that obscuring God's message by bringing in something that's not in God's message. For example, to give an example, uh, the Kikuyu say, Or some actually say, no, they don't say Idawa Modo. They say, In English, a parent is a second God. And you know, you hear even pastors talking about it, talking about how important it is. You know, because the statement is near the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments says, honor your father and your mother. But honor your father and your mother comes only after the first four commandments that say thou shalt not have another God. So when the Kikuyus teach that, um, that a parent is a second God, they are not using, they are not following the, 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 the Christian thing. They are going out of the Christian message so much 
you know, in other words, you are supposed to never disobey. You are supposed to never to disobey. Of course, you are not supposed to disobey God. So if your parents are God, then you can't disobey them. And that's where a lot of these um, uh, Kiyama people, Buria Kiyama people, the, the people taking us back to traditions, that's the thing they are using. When your father asks you to go for Guradio, you can't say no. When you are called in Russia and the father of the girl insists on something, you can't. After all, the, the father of our child is a second God. That is of criticism because you are taking an, a foreign idea because to the Bible, no other, there's only one God, nobody, no human being, no creation of God can even approximate becoming God. So it's a very good example of that. And the moment, because you see pastors are preaching it, they are talking about the, the importance of, of respecting God. That is correct. Again, I'm being controversial here. Go throughout the Bible. You will not find any teaching about adults obeying their parents. A young girl was supposed to obey her father. When she got married, she went under the lordship, and I'm now using the Old Testament, of her of her husband, not her father anymore. The Bible in the Ephesians says, children, obey your parents. It doesn't say adults. It says children, obey. So when I'm an adult, I may be 70, my parents are in their 90s, I must still honor them. That's a commandment. Respect them, honor them. Obey them, not quite. By the time they're in their 90s, they're even sinner. The things they are telling me may be even wrong. God does not expect me to obey them, but he expects me to honor them, even if I, I disagree with them. I might disagree with them with a lot of respect. So you can see clear what of criticism is. An idea that is Christian, you bring a foreign idea from the, from the, from the traditions, and it completely covers up the original Bible idea. And that's something that you have to watch out. Because when they say, oh, it's a, it's a similar, after all, they did it in the Old Testament, you know, or something like that. So that's a, a criticism. The other extreme, which also comes in this culturalization, we call syncretism. Syncretism is different. It is where you accept two separate beliefs and run with them. You want to be both a Christian and a traditionalist. And that's what a lot of Christians are talking about. On Sunday, they pray in the name of Jesus, Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, they go to Kira God, facing Mount Kenya, and they don't pray in the name of Jesus. They pray, thy, thada, ya, gai, thai. They are fully Christian and fully traditional at the same time. That's what we call syncretism. When you mix two beliefs and run with both, like they are both acceptable. And they are very separate. You understand they are separate. But you are running with both. And that's really what is the problem among Kikuyus. Many, many pap people in church are the same ones that are calling um, an elder to actually teach traditional beliefs. You know, like, like uh, one of the things that's happening currently is during circumcision time, past churches have started organizing circumcision for boys. But they are calling traditional elders into a church meeting to teach. Of course, they don't know the Bible. They are not pastors. The pastors are the one who know the Bible. But a pastor who is qualified is calling a, a traditional elder. And obviously, all he can teach are the Kikuyu traditional beliefs. Because he thinks you can be both a Christian, believing by the Bible, and at the same time, you are, a, you are, a, you are traditional, believing both. That's what you mean by syncretism. Unfortunately, my time is pretty gone. You know, we evangelicals, and everybody in this meeting is regarded as, a, as an evangelical, have, have, have clarity of what we believe. Evangelicals believe that the Bible is the only infallible text. Nothing Mugawakeviro taught, nothing Luada Magere taught, is actually unquestionable. We must question it. And so the, 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 the belief system of the, belie of the believers is the Bible is the final word on all matters of faith and conduct. That's what we say in our statement of faith. It therefore means that we must help 
our church members to understand that whatever was taught in their traditions must be checked by the Bible. The key word is to study any cultural belief to see whether it procures or adds. Adds means it's syncretic to the Bible. Even if it does, it must be rejected. That teaching must be rejected. How do you know which custom is not a religious issue? And so it's a normal, it's, I call it um, a neutral item. In the introduction, I gave several things. But let me just take you to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And, um, and it, it is addressing the same issue which we, which, which we, are, we, we, are, we are dealing with. And it will be important that we, we accurately do take it. And you see... Um, what what we are what we are we are learning is that in the the scriptures is saying in the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at various times and in various ways, but in these last days, which are current, in these last days He has spoken to us through His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things through whom. So traditionally, very clearly. We must accept that traditionally the, 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 the God did talk to us through Mugawa Kibiru. But in these last days, he is talking to us through his son, through Jesus Christ. And in the book of John, the Bible tells us the other name for, for Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, verse 14, and the word became flesh. That means Jesus is the word. It therefore means that uh, if you are going to be, if you are going to be to deal with the tradition belief, they must be checked. The scriptures have given us instruction. Those days when the ancestors, um, Can you come back?
It didn't work. I'm already in. Uh, it's working. I'm waiting for people to come. Bishop Godfrey, I'm sorry. Bishop Godfrey, we are just the two of us now. Bishop Godfrey, can you hear me? Yes, Bishop Alfred can hear you. <laughs> Bishop Alfred, <laughs> I I told you, I admitted I'm not an expert. Now you can see I'm not an expert. I was told it will not break off, and it broke off. I apologize. I sincerely apologize. <laughs> because... I was told what to do to ensure it doesn't go off, but uh, <laughs> yes. I still got it, got it, got it wrong. <laughs> let's wait. Let, let's wait one or two minutes to so for others to come in. Yes, and I can see they are coming. Yes, yes, we are telling them to come back. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have even warned you, but I was so assured. I did not even warn you. Mm. I apologize sincerely. About God. Okay. Yes, yes. Because traditions have taken us back. No, we need we need to deal with with the matter. Yes. Karanja, you are the host now. Peter, can you hear me? I can hear you five five, John. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was late because I didn't have power. Oh, sorry. We don't have power, but uh, we have improvised. Oh, thank God it is it is it is working. Amen. Now I can see we are quite a few. Peter Karanja, have you have, are you aware you are the host now? Karanja. Yes. You yes, know. In, yes. Please keep getting. Then I can now start. We are now a quorum. We are now a quorum, and um, 